Welcome back, everyone, to the Golf and Filter Podcast. Joining me are my two co-hosts, Nikki and Dan. Hi, guys. Nice to see both of you. Howdy, howdy. Hello. So uh, you may look, look a little different. As uh, longtime listeners know, I like to play around with a lot of different things. And so <laughs> we're back to StreamYard. And those of you uh, who have been familiar with the show know that we used to do that a lot. And so you're going to see all sorts of fun things flying up on the screen in future episodes because there's a lot of fun things to try. Uh, but for today... Nikki, Dan, I know we were chatting all night last night in the group chat that we're both a part of Super Bowl hangover day. Uh, are we feeling OK? I didn't actually didn't didn't even drink last night. Did you guys do anything? Yeah, I, I had maybe a couple of drinks, but I did eat my body weight and food. So yeah. I've got to... <laughs> my stomach yeah. might be hating me this morning, <laughs> but my brain is not. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it I'm actually eating day. leftovers right now. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Yeah, we had a we go to my in law uh, brother in laws and um, they have a chili cook cook off, and so uh, I did not partake in the actual making of chili, but I ate plenty of it, and um, I'm hurting today. That's all I'll say <laughs> for that. <laughs> did you not bring at any your, rate. your tums with you? I did not. I did not. But what we did see last ahead. night, right? It was a rookie move. Um, we saw the Chiefs win, I think it was Mahomes, what, second ring last night in the Super Bowl. Pretty exciting game from a scoring perspective. Uh, what did you guys think of the game overall as far as where you were watching it? It was a bummer how it ended. Like, it was such an exciting game, and then for it to end the way it did. But to be honest, it was like a perfect culmination of how the whole season has gone when it comes to officiating. So um, yeah. it might as well have ended that way. Um, I hated that I like actually kind of felt bad for the Eagles there for a minute because I just I'm I don't want to piss off any Eagles fans out there because I know how they are but I I, <laughs> I just didn't I didn't I wasn't rooting for the Eagles by any means but I actually I hated that I actually felt bad for them there for a minute because I'm not actually a fan of them at all so mm -mm. yeah no, Dan, how was, how was your Super Bowl viewing experience? Um, for for entertainment purposes, I had a great night. <laughs> um, well, I had an okay night. Um, it could have been a really, really good night had, um, had some events played out differently and that Eagles kicker not have drained that field goal right before half. But hey, you know, revisionist history at this point, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Um, but yeah, it, it, my my initial thought immediately was exactly what Nikki said. It was, it was kind of a bummer that a game that good and that exciting ended that way. Um, I guess the one good thing I can say is that at least for once it was a call that deserved to be called. Like so many times mm. this year, we've seen them make calls that were just like, where, what were you looking at? Like he was legitimately grabbing onto him. He even admitted. Right. So after the game, um, it is a bummer that that's how it had to end, but at least, uh, at least it was the right call for once. But uh, yeah, yeah, fitting ending to the year for the officiating crews in the NFL, because uh, whew, did they just have a really bad year? <laughs> yeah. They really did. I lost a lot of money. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you guys. <laughs> I, did, I, did not, I did not. Oh, do listen, well. it, it wasn't great. I mean, the uh, it could have been a lot worse than it was, but it should. Well, whatever. We're not going to get into that kick right before right. halftime. But boy, did that um, cost a pretty penny um, in the long run. <laughs> so yeah. See, Listeners this is why this. you guys have to bet on things like. What color is the Gatorade going to be? And I did. How long like, is the national it? anthem? Did I and hit that? I don't even know. What? Well, people were pretty upset because the camera only showed it after the Gatorade had been dumped. So I don't even know what color the Gatorade was. That was one oh. of the things that we were betting on. And I don't I don't know. I don't know what color it was. I don't think I it was like a blue or purple because his hat wasn't stained. But I don't know. <laughs> Who would have thought that I left as much money on the table as I did with not choosing rihanna's opening song because that i mean the odds of that had some crazy high odds last night and then that's what she opened with yeah that well is my yeah. favorite song of hers <laughs> of probably one of my favorite songs of all time like if it's in my top 10 songs of like if i need to like put myself up i will put that song on and i convinced myself that there's no way that the nfl is going to let her start with that song but I forgot that Rihanna is Rihanna and she doesn't care about what the NFL thinks. And so she's going to do what she's going to do. And I should have just gone with my faith in Rihanna over <laughs> what I think that the NFL was going to let yeah. her do. Well, so if it makes yeah. you feel any better, Vegas thought the same as you, because those were incredibly <laughs> yeah. high odds for that song. Yeah. yeah. 
bitch better have my money is the anthem that i think really defines the nfl and i think that just was a really smart <laughs> it was a smart move by rihanna nikki being our resident expert on rihanna uh and pretty much all things pop culture because i'm an idiot as it comes to it um <laughs> I know what was your overall uh rating of the super bowl halftime show i thought it was pretty good what's your take i thought it was great i thought people i think i think after last year's like medley of multiple artists people are con or, and and even previous years people are expecting there to be some sort of surprise guest and this, the number of songs that rihanna has that have other artists on them like Jay-Z and Eminem. And, you know, I, I think in Calvin Harris, like I think there were people just expecting there to be someone like some sort mm -hmm. of surprise guest. But like I said before, Rihanna is Rihanna. She doesn't need a surprise guest. She's Rihanna. She can <laughs> do it by herself. And like the fact, also the fact that she got up there and she's dangling and suspended from the ceiling in Wild. this like glass, like platform that's wobbling pregnant. Are you joking? Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but like Beyonce did the, her like pregnancy reveal at the MTV movie or awards several mm -hmm. years ago when she got up there and like, she flashed the belly and like rubbed it and that yeah. broke the internet. And then for Rihanna to get out there at the Super Bowl and do the same move. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but that's, that's huge. Yeah, that was, that was incredible. I remember, uh, so I was in my, brother-in-law's garage watching the tv he had in there and a buddy sitting next to me is like is she tied to anything because she she like looked like she was just standing on a floating stage and that was just absolutely incredible visually dan uh, i know you were driving back uh between spots but i mean this was in my opinion at least from a i don't even know what you would call it just a choreography whatever like stage set was one of the most incredible Super Bowl things I had seen. It was, it was absolutely insane. Oh, absolutely. And of course, like everything else today in life, you know, I, I was able to get caught up pretty quickly on what I had missed right. on Twitter, because obviously with something of that magnitude, there were clips everywhere you looked. So I, I was able to kind of get a general gist of what I had missed shortly thereafter. And yeah, I mean, the, the setup was incredible. Um, <laughs> obviously, the uh, backup dancers were very memeable, as I learned very, very quickly upon return home last night. <laughs> Some weird moves, um, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it, it was from from what I was able to see after the fact, it was it was very cool to see. And then obviously, of course, um, for her to do the move with the belly and then for her reps to come out mm -hmm. almost. I mean, we were we were all chatting in real time almost immediately after um, Nikki made that comment in our group about how it, was she doing the the belly thing um her mm -hmm. reps almost immediately after that came out and yeah. said yeah you know she is in fact pregnant again and whatnot so um yeah. it didn't take long as far as the guessing game went like we all kind of guessed and then almost immediately was like oh well no more guessing anymore because here's the confirmation of it but uh yeah i thought it was pretty good i know that there were people that didn't think it was that great i mean at the end of the day it's the super bowl it's kind of something that, that's there for entertaining you mm. while you're kind of getting refills on your drinks or you're getting another snack or you're using the bath, you know, whatever you do during your, during halftime of a sporting event normally. So I think it served its purpose last night. And um, I mean, it, it gave us some great uh, Twitter memes and yeah. gifs and content after the fact. So, which is always a good thing. What I thought was funny was Jay Z he's on several of her songs. He was in the building. Like <laughs> now granted he, he knew probably weeks ahead of time that he's not performing but still the fact that he was in the building and like still didn't perform on any of the songs and in the one of the lyrics in bitch better have my money is she says like ball and bigger than lebron and <laughs> lebron is there like she literally yeah. is looking lebron in the face and she's going i'm balling bigger than you man <laughs> like look at me up here on this stage performing the super bowl i'm balling bigger than you right now and the yeah. fact that she like he was there and she could say that to his face, that was um pretty cool to me. Yeah, it was. I was living vicariously through your comments. And I think, Nikki, you had maybe the the quote of the night. And I was I had a spoonful of chili in my mouth when I read it. <laughs> <laughs> you said uh, regarding uh, Rihanna's new pregnancy. Well, they don't call him ASAP for nothing. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a her her first child is only nine months old, so it's a 
It's a quick turnaround. It's a quick yeah. turnaround. I, I know but, the expression you know? rolling on the floor laughing, but that was almost literally me. I literally almost <laughs> fell off the couch rolling on the floor laughing at that at that one last night when I came through. That oh. was uh, very well, accurate, and, but very hilarious too. And in regard to the, um, I think Paige Sporanic had a good uh, comment on Twitter too that I saw about, you know, it's just hating on the Super Bowl halftime show is so like overdone right now. It's what everyone wants to do. It feels like every single year, nobody likes what's going on. And I'm like, look, let's just appreciate what this thing is. And this was absolutely spectacular from, uh, you know, I'm not even a huge Rihanna fan musically, but I certainly know a lot of the songs, but man, that was just, I, they're outdoing I, themselves every single year. I think people's I think the reason why it wasn't universally liked last night almost, and this is no through no fault of Rihanna's or really anyone else's, but last year's was so just mind blowingly good and unexpected and literally okay. every second something crazy was happening that I think it almost set the bar to an unattainable level no matter who you are. And that's not, I'm not knocking anyone. It's through no fault of anyone's that that's what happened last year. But in the society that we live in today, where everyone is just constantly expecting the next person to one up and one, up, I don't know if there was an ability to one up what last year's halftime show was. And then I think, so right. I think that that caused people to look at it in a way that it's like, Oh, well it wasn't good as last year. So now it wasn't good. Well, last Last year's was its own unique thing that I don't think we'll ever see again. So, yeah, if you'd like to compare it to that, sure. Nothing I don't think will ever be as good as what last year's was, right. but it wasn't supposed to be what last year's was. Correct. Right. She doesn't yeah. need all of that to have a good performance. Like, and exactly. not that yeah. any of the others did either, though. Not, all of the others could have done their own performance too, and it still would have been great. But yeah, I think, like you said, the people. People are expecting that now, which is, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. I think, um, like, just enjoy what's there. Like, it's okay. Like, you don't have to always expect the worst out of something. You don't always have to go into it critiquing it. You know, there's, mm -hmm. um, like, people always want to be backseat drivers or, you know, couch critiques for anything pop culture related. And it's annoying. Just enjoy it. It's fine yeah. to enjoy it. I enjoyed it. It's fine. It's okay to like things these days. Absolutely. Well, another yeah. thing that we uh, that we enjoyed was, of course, the Waste Management Phoenix Open, which also concluded in probably the craziest time ever in Arizona. And I know that a mutual friend of ours, uh, Sam Marks, was down there as well. We got to live a little bit vicariously through her and all the updates that she was posting as well. But Scotty Scheffler goes back to back at Waste Management in an elevated event. I didn't realize how much money these guys were bringing home. I didn't for some reason. And there we go. Nikki on the spot with Scotty. There it is. 3.3 million. And I think second place got like 2.2 2 or something like that. That's yeah. The, they you, upped the purse to 20 golf. million. This. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Oh my God. I couldn't believe it. And you know, this is a circumstance where, and by the way, I, I, uh, Nikki, correct me. What is Scotty's uh, wife's name again? Meredith. Meredith, I mm -hmm. saw a video of her apologizing to Nick Taylor's wife. I'm like, maybe not needed. I don't know the feeling on the apology. I mean, well, I think it like, I don't know. I, I kind of was felt the same way. I was like, um, like, you're sorry for what? Like, you're sorry that like, sorry, I'm sorry we smoked you. But right. like, but also I, I it kind of goes into like sportsmanship. It's like, you know, I'm so sorry that, you know, you work so hard and that all those emotions were there. And like, you know, I'm so sorry that we just won this last year and that we couldn't have just given this to you because we already did this and we don't need this money or something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Maybe that's the take on it. I don't know. I, I thought it was kind, what else are you supposed to say? Like, thanks for trying. You know, right. I, I, there's nothing else she could have said that would have been any better, you know, like. I don't think anyone needs to be apologizing for anything today i mean especially mm -hmm. when you look at nick taylor and forgive me if i have this incorrect but i'm pretty sure i saw after the fact on twitter yesterday i, I think he it was it's 222nd in the world he's ranked i know he's ranked outside the top 200 in the world uh yeah. nick taylor he just cashed a check for over two million dollars yesterday he earned enough fedex cup points where he's set now he's he's in the playoffs no matter what he's going to finish the year in the top 125 which means he's basically set himself up 
to play in all the elevated events the rest of the season. He'll get right. into the elevated events for next season. Um, he's going to be okay. Did he win? No, but you know, it's golf. There's only one winner and a hundred and something losers every week. And so if you're going to finish runner up in a week, I feel like in these elevated events, it's probably not a bad time to have a runner up finish, especially if you're, like I said, somebody like Nick Taylor and mm-hmm. you know, or, or, or it's, you're not a top 20 player. So, I mean, that's just for finishing runner up. That's going to be a huge uh, life changing moment for him yesterday that he absolutely had as far as his career trajectory is now going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. It's not the squid games. It's not like right. loser. <laughs> like you don't have to apologize to the loser because the loser's still coming out pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. And Nick Taylor was was, you know, right on it all week long. I mean, I actually had the opportunity to watch a, a fair amount of the golf. I do like this tournament a lot. I would admit I don't watch every PJ Tour event, but this one I will watch. And, you know, Scotty Scheffler playing as well as he did on what was arguably the fastest greens <laughs> that we had seen for a while. Dan, you were sharing a bunch of, you know, Change. clips for social, just insane golf balls, not staying on the putting surface. Absolutely incredible. I mean, I, Maverick, Maverick McNeely, I think it was on Friday, right before he withdrew. He had that putt where he was on one side of the green over by the fringe. And I mean, it wasn't, it, it was not, he didn't put a lot behind the putt. It's not like he just, torpedoed the putt and that's what happened but i mean he made his putt and it didn't hit the hole and it just kept going and then didn't stop until it went into the water uh we saw a john rom putt where it he he did make it but had it not essentially backstopped and dropped and maybe hopped over that thing probably would have gone another 10 yards before it stopped and he would have ended up being having to chip back on so yeah i mean those pga tour you don't your the stimp does not need to be at 13 every week Yes. In Europe, yeah, in Europe, they manage to have compelling, fun to watch, challenging tournaments with stimps of like 10. It yeah. doesn't need to be putting on glass every week. <laughs> no, I relating agree with you. This, relating this back to the Super Bowl, though, Golf Digest posted a tweet last night <laughs> yes, about how the, the USGA was involved in helping grow the grass and like put the grass out on the field for that Super Bowl game, the same grass that everyone was complaining about how terrible it was and how mm-hmm. it was causing so many problems during the game. Like the same the same grass and the same USGA <laughs> that was involved in the tournament in that same city where there were problems with balls just flying over the greens. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't know. It was that a bad day for be- turf. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like that. See, I don't know. That seems to be there needs there's there's a bigger story there. And yeah. um, Roger Goodell, Zach Johnson on line one for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they have lost the course. They have lost the Super Bowl. Hundred percent. Yeah, that was interesting. That dynamic between the the stories of two turfs and, you know, I don't know. I mean, in the day and age when we're talking about satellites and spy balloons in the air, and I mean, you think we could figure out grass? Uh, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Not only that, but think about how much of an epic failure the Super Bowl grass was. was they, they cultivated that grass for two years, spent over eight hundred thousand dollars on it, and biggest stage in an NFL season. And you are going to go ahead and roll the dice on letting that be the first time that grass is even used, like right test run maybe for the Super Bowl. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. What Absolutely. are we doing? That was rough. That was rough to watch. Definitely. And, you know, as far as the uh, the waste management goes, I mean, we we know what to expect in this tournament. I have gone once. I don't know if you guys have ever been, but it is an app. Ab- it is ad- ad- as advertised when you go. I mean, it is drunkenness from five in the morning until whenever this guy makes an appearance. And <laughs> it's just absolutely incredible. He out. I had somebody, a friend of mine was there watching it. Um, saw that happen he outran a golf cart he would he had no problem with the turf <laughs> then he b- I belly see, flopped i, into I the, didn't see into this in real time either but i saw it after the fact because once again twitter you know is, yeah. is the world these days but um i guess he had painted on his back 19th hole with an arrow yeah. uh going mm-hmm. downstairs on his back too so um bravo to I'll him for the, uh, the bravo to him for the uh, creative wordplay there too as well yeah 
Yeah, I mean, that's just the way it is, too. And the one time I had gone, I think I told you guys, I mean, on 16, everyone just runs what they call it the running of the bros. Now, I think Golf Digest did a couple videos of that. It's exactly like that. And, you know, I personally people listening to this will probably roll their eyes at it. And you guys know I'm kind of like an old man without being an old man. <laughs> I just I've done it. I don't think I need to go back ever. Like, I, It's fine. I don't know. Have you guys been? I have not. And I. I, people are going to roll their eyes at this too. And this is where, this is where my elitist grew up going to Augusta comes out in me. Do declare. I, 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 yes, I know. Clutching my pearls. Um, <laughs> like I, there's, there's two sides of it. Like I would love to go, but like only if I got press passes and could avoid that mess because like all of the, all of my friends who go, and who have the best time don't have to deal with that. Like they, right. they get there at like 10 AM, they roll in, they don't even have to like fight the crowds. They're like down on the field. They're there or days before. I mean, it, they, they don't have to deal with that mess. Also, again, my kind of grew up at Augusta, like mindset on this. And I, I have tried desperately to not be that person. I I've gotten a little bit better about it, but the first couple of times I saw videos of those running things, I'm like, Bobby Jones would be rolling over in his grave if he saw people running on a golf course. What are you doing? But then I have to remind myself, like, this is not Augusta. Like, this is the point of this is to not be Augusta. Um, yeah. And to bring up, I, I know we mentioned Paige and Sam a couple of times on their mm -hmm. podcast um, last week. They mentioned, you know, would you, if you had the chance to go to Waste Management or Augusta, which of the two would you go to? And immediately I answered like in my head, Oh, Augusta, obviously, mm -hmm. but they, they said, go to waste management. And I think, <laughs> I think that's a good point because if it, it just depends on your style, it depends on if you kind of grew up like me and were more of the, like golf is supposed to be this way, mm -hmm. that's going to drive you nuts just fighting yeah. people in the crowds and the listening to people yell while they're teeing off, that's going to drive you nuts. But if you are more like a part of the legacy, mm -hmm. you know, golf is about the awards and the trophies, you're going to want to, you know, fight for more of the masters. And I think there are a lot of people brought up some good points on Twitter is that this tournament is what Liv wants to be or what right. Liv think, thinks that it is. Um, and probably won't be at least for a very long time you know so um yeah yeah i think that's the that's the the, the two biggest differences you know mm -hmm. no it's a good point it's a good dynamic too and, and dan i don't know if you've ever been to the phoenix open but uh what's your take on that you you would probably have a good time i have a feeling so i'm conflicted on this one so i haven't been to that one yet um i have obviously living where i live i've been to the honda you know, a right. million times. And I, I think the closest comparison you have to 16 at, at Phoenix is 17 at Honda and the bear trap there, because over the mm -hmm. years they have kind of tried to turn it into a mini um, 16 at Phoenix. They, it is now completely enclosed in um, stadium style. Mm -hmm. um, I have spent an, a, a full day in at the bear trap in 17 like that, just to kind of see what it was like. Um, I was a lot younger then. it was fun. Um, in my old manness now <laughs> that, and that's not even close to the level that Phoenix is. I don't know if I could handle Phoenix. Um, I think if I were to do it, I mean, I, I do want to do it. If I feel like it's something you experience. I think if I were to do it though, now I would want to do it almost like how Nikki was saying either with a credential or, mm -hmm. um, like how Sam and Paige were, where they were in a suite. So you didn't have to run. You could cut, get there when you wanted, you had seats, you could go out throughout the rest of the course come back and you you didn't have to worry about you could you could experience that but also not miss out on the entire tournament because the one thing that was the knock on when I did that at the bear trap where I literally just got there went straight there and spent the whole day in there to see what it would be like was you literally have no clue what is right. going on anywhere else other than on 16 there or 17 there um I think it I think it um at the waste management, I think they have uh, more in the way of like monitors where you can kind of keep track of what's going on a little bit better. Um, it was at okay. Honda, they really don't. Well, yeah. they, they've gotten better at that too, but basically like 
in the in the area where you go get beer, like they'll have TVs mm. and stuff. But unless yes. you want to sit yes. in there, then you can't. Re- so it's the same thing. So either right. you're going to sit in there and watch it, which in this case, why are you even in there? Go out the rest of the course, or you're sitting in the seats and getting in, in that. But then you literally have no clue what's going on anywhere else. So like, right from yeah, an experience for- standpoint, yeah, I think everyone needs to do it like once in their life. But when I go to golf tournaments, I actually go to figure watch the golf i know these days you know well it's it's yeah. not but a lot of people don't when they go to these things these days and especially those types of tournaments but i'm there to watch the golf so it's it's almost like it's a fun experience but then i'm missing out on what's actually happening in the tournament so it's a double-edged yeah. sword like i said i think if i were to do it now i'd want to do it and have it in, in one of those suites or in one of those um, hospitality areas where you can go in and out kind of freely you don't have to do the running of the bros at 4 a.m or 5 a.m <laughs> you know you can experience it but you can enjoy the whole course and whatnot um but yeah it's it's definitely it looks so much like so much fun on tv and i feel like as a golf fan it's something i need to experience at least once in my life but i feel like it where i'm at now in life in my age i feel like if i were to do it i would splurge you could say and and get the higher hospitality type tickets where you can kind of do everything but that's a good point though that you made about like staying in one place and getting to pretty much only see one hole because there's when you go to a golf tournament, there's kind of really two ways to do it. You either follow the course Mm -hmm. or you stay in one place and let the golf come to you. And it truly comes down to like your opinion, your, your, again, your style, like we were talking about earlier, your style of how you want to do it. And I know we've talked about this on the podcast before and like when tiger is, is at a tournament if mm-hmm. you are trying to follow a person, it's depending on the person, especially Tiger, it's really hard to do to follow around. Um, and even if you are following one person around a course, you're not going to really know what else is going on at the other holes. Um, but if you are staying in one place, a lot of golf can come to you. But again, like you said, you're not going to know what's going on around the course. And I think you know, especially at Augusta, you don't know what's going on because it's not like you can get a text that, oh, oh, Ricky Fowler just got an, an ace on seven, you know? Right. Um, and that's that was another thing that I thought was really interesting this weekend was, what was it, Thursday when Tiger made his announcement that he was mm-hmm. returning to, mm-hmm. to the Genesis, that people were getting like obviously alerts on their phone and they're walking around talking about it saying, oh, Tiger's coming back, Tiger's coming back. I, I couldn't help but think about, and we made the joke about like, oh, somebody should, they should have put up his tweet on one of the like yeah. scoreboards or on one of the TVs around. Um, but people had their phones and they could talk about it around with people. Mm-hmm. And that's something I, I like, and it was the the buzz of the entire tournament that day. I couldn't help but think about how, how that would have been in Augusta where you don't mm-hmm. have any phones and how like no one would have had any clue what was going on until right. they came out of the tournament that day. Or like if they would have ro- rolled it up on one of like the leaderboards or something like tiger is coming back. Like there's no way would, they would have done that, but still how just how much of a big deal it was that that was the news of the day that it took over the rest of the tournament Mm -hmm. And that was the news and the buzz for the day. So one of the, I I hate to use the word knock on it because it's, it's designed to be that way. And it's really, really cool. But I guess one of the downsides you could say of 16 being fully enclosed stadium style is that you are basically isolated from the rest of the course. Because you guys know from going to professional golf tournaments, most tournaments are pretty wide open. I mean, you have your stands and you have your hospitality area set up, but most courses are configured where you can go, even if you just want to stay in one spot all day, you can find a spot where you can usually see two to three mm-hmm. holes at a time. You can see guys hit their approach shots on the one green and then tee off on the next green and then off in the distance, they're playing another hole. So you can sit in one spot and still get a feel for what's going on in the tournament as a whole, because you're able to kind of keep an eye on two, three, four holes at a time. Right. When you have a situation like 17 at Honda or 16 in Phoenix, where it's completely enclosed stadium style, Yes, that's a great appeal to it, but you are completely 100% isolated from the entire rest of the golf course, which, listen, you're there to be doing that and have fun, but it also, there are times where you're like, huh, I wonder what is going on everywhere else, because you do come kind of feel that isolation to an extent where it's like you really are just in one enclosed area and there's nothing else going on around you. 
Yeah, for those who don't know, have never been there, it, it's exactly like that. I mean, you go in, you are enclosed, you race to get there. They don't even start selling beer until 9 a.m. And so because it's the 16th hole, you're literally sitting there with people you've never known. You know, you're, you're making friends very quickly. And, uh, you know, points that you both brought up are absolutely true. That being said, it is, in my opinion, something from a bucket list standpoint that if you want to go do it as a pro golf fan, go do it once. Maybe you don't have to run out there. Dan, do it before you're 40. I'm telling you right now, buddy. <laughs> you go out there and do <laughs> I it. I know. All right. It's only yeah. going to keep uh, my motivation level to do it is only going to get yeah, less as the no. years keep going. And, <laughs> and it is, it is, as I said to you guys, it was the best gambling experience I had ever had in my life. Not because I had won like a ton of money. It was just the, this is going to sound so whatever but just the communal aspect of it there were people running up and down the stands like taking bets it looked like almost like a ticker take uh you know from uh, the stock market or something it was absolutely insane so it's a great it's a great atmosphere i mean personally now i mean i'm not going to go out there and drink a case of beer and then throw cans on the on the course i mean that's just not me anymore but um there was a time believe it or not <laughs> there was a time so it's it's funny you bring up the gambling portion because that day i spent in the bear trap in 17, um, you know, it's the same situation. You sit there all day long, you start talking to the same people or you start making friends pretty quickly. Cause you're enclosed in the same, you know, I mean, you can go in and out a little bit easier there, but still for the most part, the people that are there are there to hang out all day. And, um, yeah, it got to a point where, during the day where basically I had these group of guys sit next to me with the, you know, when you go to these, when you go to the tournaments, you can get the little pairing sheets and they give it to you in a little like pamphlet style thing with everything else. And these guys were sitting there with like Mark. It was like, they were handicapping at a horse race. To try yeah, to figure out, like okay, that. who's going to be closest to the pin on this next group coming through? Who's going to hit the green? Who's not? And they were throwing money down on it, like like you would at a yep. horse race. And that to me was the most was um, compelling part of the day. I didn't even I, I did participate a little bit, but it was more. I'm a fan of people watching in in, in spectacle in events like such as that. So for me, just from the people watching standpoint, it was I just sat there. I don't think I watched much of the golf. I was watching everyone else do what yeah, they were doing right. around the golf. So for me, I think that would be the most fun to me. On it, it, if I were to go out there, it's not even so much watching the golf. It's watching everyone else interacting with each other and how they're interacting with the golf experience going on almost as an afterthought and a background of the giant, massive party that's happening in the stands. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Speaking of making bets, um, I don't know if anybody saw earlier today, um, Phil Nicholson <laughs> posted something on Twitter. Um, yeah. What that, is this? Yeah. I, yeah. He, he posted, um, I'll just read the tweet for our listeners who aren't watching on YouTube. Um, our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln is in the pro wrestling hall of fame with a record of roughly two ninety nine to one. Just thought you'd like to know shrug emoji. Have a nice day. And congrats to the Kansas city chiefs. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> first of all random thing what how do how are those two related like <laughs> i don't get it there's something wrong with phil i don't know i don't know what's going on i mean we I, may, we joke about his look we joke about his weight loss but then he comes out with this stuff i no i, I am okay. i am actually i know we make fun of him a good bit but i i am actually starting to get my, like mildly concerned you know yes. like you know, I I know he he brought up the weight loss on his own. You know, not that we wouldn't have noticed it, um, but you know, he brought up that he was back to his like college weight and everything. But but then the the like Amanda Bynes, Kanye, Britney Spears level like esque yeah. tweets that he's been throwing out lately. Um, you know, like if he if he starts tweeting about how he has beef with Peppa Pig. <laughs> then then we then we are concerned folks my my question my, for phil is is what um what um professional wrestling organization was even in existence when abraham lincoln right. was president because to my knowledge the modern day re professional wrestling that we uh know of in this country um I, i'm pretty sure wasn't existing back then so i, well, I that's what i want to know then. is what what where, where's this 299 and one record coming from and what in right. what capacity i don't want to know anything about any type of wrestling in abraham lincoln's time that's all i'm saying <laughs> i don't need to know anything because it ain't and none of it's good it's probably for the best <laughs> uh, well abraham lincoln's birthday was yesterday it was february 12th so mm -hmm. maybe like and president's day is coming up so right. uh, maybe you know 
maybe he's got one of them little calendars on his desk that has like fun <laughs> facts. And he's like, I need to send a Super Bowl tweet. I don't know. He's, he he's ca- it's getting like old man, like deranged yeah. thoughts. Like maybe his kids got him that calendar of the idea. day thing for Christmas or something with the, fa- like we right. say Nikki, like the facts of the day for the calendars or something. I don't know. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but poor Phil. speaking of other tweets, um, we talked about this a minute ago too. Um, Tigers <laughs> tweeted this last week, ready oh, to play so an good. actual PGA tour event next week. So tiger has committed to the Genesis. He is coming back. He will be playing this event this week. Yep. Thoughts? I'm I'm excited. I mean, obviously, you know, we're going to talk about this post event, but I mean, he he's got a little bit of a history, recent history, with the Genesis, and not all good. Um, first of all, the tweet itself it was, I don't know if he meant to do this, but it is trolling at its finest because Big Cat is petty as hell, and it was he sent this on Greg Norman's birthday, and it was just so delicious. If that's what he was intending to do, and I don't know if you guys caught this too. And our, our friend of the program Monday Q info did catch it, but Nikki, if you show that tweet one more time, you'll notice how it's written out. He did not capitalize the word tour. When they showed this tweet on the PGA tour broadcast, they capitalized the word tour. So how, speaking of petty, I mean, the tour, they got a little bit of a thing going on there, but anyway, I digress. (laughs) My thoughts on it. Oh, sorry. I would say my thoughts on it is I want Nikki's um, I'm going to defer my, my thoughts on it. I want Nikki to give us her um, her Tiger Taylor Swift comparison, because that had ve- that that tweet had on the date and time that it was released, um, as Nikki pointed out, was giving off major, major uh, T Swift vibes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like Adam said, so he posted the tweet on um uh, when he shared that and when he made the announcement, it was on Greg Norman's birthday, which, you know, honestly, Tiger could have made that announcement at any time. He could have said he was coming back at on any day. He could have announced it. He could have gotten with Nike and done a Super Bowl commercial that said, I'm coming back, which also would have been epic. Um, but he chose to do it on Greg Norman's birthday. And, you know, Taylor Swift is also known for doing kind of petty things like that. She has announced that she's going to release albums on her last album release. uh, Midnight was released on the same day as Kim Kardashian's birthday. Um, So she's also done other like album releases on certain like people's birthdays and things that are, are known uh, enemies of hers. So um, yeah, the fact that she's, Oh yeah. There you go. There it is Um, right there. There it is. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, um, our resident pop culture expert just on it. (laughs) Just just absolutely on it. (laughs) I knew nothing about that Kim Kardashian connection, by the way, when you said it, you know, I've, I've looked up my Google search history has changed so much after getting to know you two, because I just don't know (laughs) like this stuff going on. I'm like, what, wait, why, What, what does Nikki mean by Taylor Swifting it? So really, really interesting stuff. I mean, We've got so much more that we're going to cover. This is a very busy week in professional golf. We're going to record again a little bit later in the week, folks. But just preview of what's coming up if you've been living on Mars under a rock. We've got Full Swing that debuts on Wednesday. Nikki and I had a chance to talk to uh, the executive producer, Chad Mum, a couple episodes ago. So we're going to watch that. We're going to recap that. And I know the joke's been every podcast is going to recap it. We're going to do it, too. I'm not even going to lie. We need to do it. And yep. then, of course, we got the Genesis, which we, we already alluded to. Tiger Woods playing in it. Obviously, he had that horrible car wreck that really changed golf or almost changed golf in a very poor way, a very negative way. Uh, thankfully, he's coming back. I think that's a really big step in his career overall, if not just for a symbolic thing. We're going to talk about that again. What else am I missing? I'm sure there's other things going on that I can't even think about in pro golf this week. I'm probably going to lose money again, but I don't know what else is going to go on. <laughs> yep. Um, I don't know. Th- those are the two big ones that I can think yeah. about. Like right now, all I can think about is the Netflix show and yeah. um, and Tiger Woods. Um, uh, Valentine's Day is, oh, yeah. you know, a thing. 
So I mean, for, for entertainment purposes for you and I, Adam, uh, baseball season basically started today. Oh, pitchers and catchers yeah, report. Pitchers and catchers reporting. So um, that is on the horizon in non-golf related. Uh, hey, don't uh, leave news. out Nikki on that. Her Atlanta Braves are ranked number two in the power ranking. I saw. Oh, I wasn't. Atlanta. I was just speaking for the <laughs> entertainment purposes side of things. Oh, but right, no, as right, far right, as right. all of us being baseball fans. Yeah, no, I'm very <laughs> excited about the fact that uh, especially where I'm located here in South Florida, I've got uh you got spring uh, training well, everywhere yeah. right now. Yeah, I've got yeah. I've got five teams within uh, 40 minutes of my house. So Damn. Uh, we've got the wow. the Expo or I'm sorry, we've got the Nationals, the Houston Astros, the Marlins, the Cardinals and the Mets all within uh, a 30 to 45 minute drive of my house. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be uh, checking some baseball out here over these next couple Excellent. of weeks for sure. So, well, in that case, let's just establish loyalties right now. Nikki is a Braves fan. Mm-hmm. You're a Reds fan, right, Dan? I am. Yeah. I'm a white. Uh, fortunately, so they I, used they used to yeah. they used to do their spring training here in South Florida along with everyone else. And then when that was Arizona, Arizona became the new hot spot. You know, they uh, they moved right. out there. But yeah, no, no. Still, uh, we're, we're rooting for the think, Reds over here. I don't, I don't think our guys are going to do so hot this year, uh, Dan. I think we're going to be uh, again living Nick, vicariously. Nick, he's through the only Nick one with any then. hope. Yeah, yeah. right. Right. But any rate. All right. Well, we will revisit this uh, throughout the baseball season as well. I'm sure there'll be some bragging going on and even some crosstown rivalries, perhaps when our teams play each other, if that's even considered crosstown at any rate. Nikki, Dan, always good to speak with both of you. Uh, We'll be back again a little bit later in the week. Uh, Folks, for those watching on YouTube, please give us a subscribe for those listening on Apple or Spotify. Tell your friends we're a good group. We've got a good, good show for you guys. So. We'll be and back. Follow soon. us on social. So yes, yeah. thank you. See, this is why we need reminders. Thank you, Nikki. I mean, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm here. <laughs> All right, folks.